Also, I want to start with some definitions, but it's going to be of a general nature without going too much into detail. I'm not going to talk about liberalism and conservatism as uh, well-structured ideologies, because we don't have such ideologies at all in Russia. But I'm going to talk about values. The main difference between these two, the way I see it, is that conservatism requires a political order to follow traditional values and liberalism would want to follow the values of freedom and responsibility of the individual. This is the fundamental difference between these two ideologies. In the past 20 years, the combination of these two structures of values in Russia has been radically changed like a 100 degree change. Uh, we used to have powerful liberal trend at the end of the 1980s, early 1990s. Despite all the views that were prevalent back then, ma mainly it was a liberal trend, liberal values. It has changed, a conservative trend right now. Oh, if you use the terminology of this conference. In my presentation, I would like to discuss the causes of them that and consequences. The main causes, the main factors of this inversion are these. First, a failure in modernizing the country in 1990s. Well, the reforms that we had back then, second factor, Uh, the economy based on oil rent, the, the state that just uses a profit from oil exports, like other countries in the Persian Gulf, that was started in the early 21st century. And the third factor, the so-called orange revolutions outside of Russia. These factors combined to reinforce the positions of conservatism. And I'm going to talk about that later as well. But before, a few remarks which echo on the previous presentations. First, the differences between liberalism and conservatism. Liberalism emphasizes more uh, universal values. It is. It has common uh, fundamentals in all countries. A liberal movement in every country is similar to liberal movements in other countries because of these universal values lying on the foundation of it. Conservatism is different, and I do not fully agree with Grigory Yevlinsky in that. Conservatism relies on its own national tradition. The US, UK, well, there could be a liberal conservatism there because their base cultural traditions in those values, they have the values of freedom. But Russia is different. We do not have freedom as a value in Russia, in our, in our traditional values. And they came to this country at a late period in time. And these were not core values in the past for Russia. Although, of course, our predecessors back in the 19th century spoke about those values, but this is not part and parcel of our culture. So, to be a conservator, <coughs> conservatism in Russia is different from conservatism in UK or US. In Russia, these are the values of, uh, defined by Count Uvarov, uh, Orthodox Church, uh, nation, etc. But it's against liberal uh, values. The peculiarities of Russian conservatism is reliance on thousands of years of Russia. And that history of a thousand years is all, all against liberalism. So if a person says he's a conservative, that would mean that they are against liberal values. 
it's either exotic, you rely on experience of our or countries, or eclectic. Well, if we say eclectic, uh, we used to have a politics politician, Vladimir Putin, uh, in, on the eve of the millennium. He had a statement. Uh, there was an important uh, keynote statement where he said that in Russian society there are two pillars. One pillar for the society is human universal human values, rights and freedoms, especially of the right here, the right to be able to go abroad, leave the country. And the second pillar, he said, conservatism, patriotism, natural dignity, uh, reliance on authorities. That was 1998 when he made that speech. And statehood strong state as source and guarantor of order, initiator and the main driving force for any change. That's what he said. Well, people are asking, who is Mr. Putin? They couldn't understand what he, man he was. But they should have listened to that speech. What he says, well, there is this tradition, basic values for Russian political culture. And while well, he uh, mentioned those principles, if implemented in the practice, those values, the conservative values, then we get what, what we've got in this country. I believe this is an important thing to understand. The current balance between liberal and modernization ideas, and we're talking about modernization in the modern world, we are guided there by the achievements and technologies of developed countries who follow the liberal path. And we then need to decide what, how to deal with the tradition. The ideas of progress, liberalism, and modernization, they may win only if we reject some of the traditional values. We are not unique in that. The experience of Turkey, Kemal Ataturk, he was very re resolute in dealing with the old Islamic tradition of that country. I will not go into detail here, but we have to be aware of this. Certain tradition have to be lost because these traditions lead the country into a deadlock. Sometimes, well, may destroy the country. Some more about uh, uh, essential things here. For a country like Russia, which is a country of well, emerging markets, it is often referred to. Well, for us, liberal values are associated with positive attitude to modernization. Uh, we should want to move forward. We should want to copy the progressive liberal countries. But conservatism, on the other hand, is the denial of this movement towards the future. So in that way, conservatism is close to fundamentalism. Fundamentalism in Islamic countries, in their tradition, that is conservatism. Yes, it's radical. Yes, it's reactionary. But our conservatism is also reactionary. The one we have right now with denial of any Western uh, direction of the Russian development. There's uh, this powerful conservative, conservative trend opposing that progress. I mentioned uh, several factors that reinforced this conservative trend. The first factor, of course, is a failure to modernize uh, what we did in the 1990s. It was bad policy, bad reform. Well, uh, Grigory Yevlinsky also spoke about this. We know the history. We know why do we have this defective pseudo-capitalism. But those reforms also resulted uh, in uh, uh, negative attitudes of most of the society. 
to towards liberal democratic values. And they kind of, the society kind of withdrew from those values. Uh, and th this process it continues happening right now, and that process is supported by the ruling elites. And I'm going to say more about this. If I compare, I can give you an example here. It's a totally different country, different experience, but reform in Iran. Hey, but it's also a failure. Those were radical reforms in the uh, 1970s. Uh, what was the response? A powerful response by reactionary forces, uh, getting the country back to the fundamental traditions of the country. Is Islamic sheet Islam. There could be other examples there. Well, the Orthodox Church in Russia, it's not that powerful as a tradition and can hardly be used as a foundation because we had almost a high hundred years of denial of a religion. So it's not that strong a tradition. Therefore, our conservatives rely on this mixture, a cocktail of sorts from different various elements of tradition. They take anything they could find which is anti-Western and put it together. They use the experience of Tsar's power. Orthodoxy also used as an element and orthodoxy in what they're using has little to do with real religion. It's just rituals, external appearance of it. And it's also combined with national Bolshevism, Stalinism, and all of that is being supported by our conservatists. Next factor I mentioned is the creation of oil-based economy. When we analyze the practice of the monarchies in the Persian Gulf, well, they just get all of their revenues from oil trades, and our country is in a similar situation. After the failure of the reforms, the country is on the crossroads. What to do next? Do we try to continue with modernization? But during that reform, we destroyed Russian industry as such. It was like a getting back a hundred years into the past. So we had to do something. Every time people speak about new industrialization, new development, you have to modernize. You have to modernize for the country to be able to move forward. At the start of the century, that kind of, uh, well, uh, uh, the problem was resolved by itself because suddenly prices of oil and gas started growing and in that situation, it turned up that the country did not have any other choice. You don't, didn't have to do any modernization at all. We can buy anything using the money that we're going to get from the sale of hydrocarbons. Well, the results on the, all the latest achievements of the modern economy can be simply bought. It's like well, your personal health. You either do fitness uh, training, etc., and uh, stay fit, or you can buy medicine to and think that you will stay fit. It is like this. The government relying on oil exports. Also, another problem here. The, the authorities uh, have access to these enormous resources, natural resources. And that makes them think differently. Okay, to year 2000, and we met personally with him, Yablinsky, and other members of Yablaku faction, met with President Putin. He said them. He said, I'm not going to uh, be here until retirement age. And that was in Kremlin. He was president. You know what happened after that? And yeah, well, he continues to be in power, and no one knows when he stops. Now, he loves the power. The resources are enormous. 
I want immediately to start the center of become the the center of the world, hold the Olympics, World Cups, and change the borders. And of course, they would negate any attempt to modernize because modernization throughout the world, meaning restricting the powers of the authorities. Well, you have to share with other branches of government and in terms of duration, it's not acceptable to always state in power. So that's a break on modernization, break on liberalism. It's no, no European way. This is conservatism. This is a present. What should they take as a gift? Uh, the statehood, uh, patriotism, conservative values. Yes, for uh, patriotism. Another observation here. The conservative tradition, and while well, Putin often ma mentions patriotism, well, and what and what is patri patriotism? It's not only a deep feeling of a person loving his motherhood, but it's like a feeling that has been artificially fueled up. It's an emotion that is wound up, strong emotion. In that sense, good saying from Samuel Johnson that patriotism is the last resort of uh, villains because it uh, in instigates strong emotion detracting the, t the attention of people from other things, from uh, problems that a country may have. Corruption, we know it's a big problem for this country. Very, very, very uh, strong here in all international ratings. Social stratification, huge proportion of the, of the population is very low income, despite the fact that the country itself is very rich. So now people tend to forget these problems. If this is overshadowed by strong emotion, national inferiority complex, patriotic emotion, as a result, we see enemies in everybody around us. And the third factor, as I mentioned, the Orange Revolution. On the one hand, they have strong power, and there is a fear that they will lose that power. And it uh, gets well, additional impulse from uh, news from abroad, and uh, Ukraine, Arabic Spring, another revolution in Ukraine, etc., all of that creates fear with them. As a result, they want to take preventing measures to not allow such scenarios to evolve in Russia. What can, should be done for that? Denial. Denial of all Western. It all comes from the West. And our traditional values here should counteract what uh, comes from the West. So in this way they start to engage in propaganda and in spin control and society is almost prone to this spin control. Why is it prone? Because of those failed reforms. Everything that's related to liberalism and democracy is like to Pavlov's dogs a signal is when we have a shock therapy. So people are now averse, averse to democracy and liberalism because of those shock therapy of the 1990s. And the, the elites of the government uh, is just extracting revenues from the raw materials. Conservatism is the savior for them, it's the magic ideology for them that could preserve their power. But uh, that's the trends they used for uh, propaganda. They want uh, to subdue society, and what we see is an outrageous propaganda via mass media. Uh, 
Of course, it's not innocuous in any way. What's happening in Ukraine, the annexation of Crimea, the secret uh, inter hidden intervention in the east of Ukraine on the part of Russia is the continuation of all of this. Because you need to keep up with those, uh, that hysteria, that level of emotions. You need to feed that patriotism. Words are not enough. You need to take some action. Ideology can only justify itself when it to pre it does what it preaches. So that's the difference between conservatism and liberalism. Liberal liberals want to develop the country to boost its wealth, per capita grow, uh, revenue, and so prosperity is the ultimate goal of liberalism, while the ultimate goal of conservatism is territorial expansion. That's in line with those uh, uh, autocracy nationality principles uh, presented by Mr. Uvar, by Count Uvarov in the 19th century. Well, there is an international study that was done. So the universal overview of values. Of course, it's a separate issue, but I'd like to give you some of the main data. So, Inglehart, I'm sure you know this person. He's behind this concept. So there's a world, an international trend in terms of the values development. So he's beyond conservative or liberalism. He doesn't, he doesn't stick to it. But this axis it means the switch from traditional values to industrial values, while the X axis means the switch from the industrial values to post-industrial values to the knowledge-based economy. So Russia is pretty high up here. So we've got different countries. We've got post-communist countries and also very close to the zone covered by orthodoxy. It was, this study was done five years ago. So Russia is up here, and during the Soviet Union, Russia has moved towards industrial values. But in terms of post-industrial values, you can see that Russia is still in the primitive stage. It's premature, just like Morocco, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and other countries. Although in terms of the industrial values, it's on par with the European countries. Moving on, please. Next slide. So what does this mean? This switch, uh, this y-axis switch from agrarian to industrial society means that you move on to industrialization. From traditional dogmas, you move to rational thinking and secularization. So you move away from religious dogmas and dependence on the church. So as for the x-axis, moving from industrialism to post-industrialism, it uh, is in line with liberal, the liberal trend. It's boosting the autonomy of personality. The personality does not depend on any external factors, uh, factors that seem to suppress. It's like the big boss, dictator, autocrat. So liberalism is all about freedom, personal values, I'm sure you'll understand what I'm talking about. So in 2007, that survey was done in 2007. We don't have the latest data, but still, look at the evolution. So all move forward. Some countries continue to move towards a more industrial, a more rational society, a more secular society. And the majority of the countries moves, oh, you can see it's continents, not just countries, in Latin America, they move towards post-industrial values. The freedom of speech, 
the freedom of expression. And there's only exception. You know, no one's tried to provide, to, to have any bias. So, you know, the, this, the author of that study has not been engaged in any kind of propaganda. So Russia is moving backwards and in both directions. So it's moving towards traditional values. We're moving. Here you can see the sorrow. Uh, and we're moving towards the industrial society, not post-industrial the most conservative layer of this trend. So, in contrast to the whole of the world, we're moving backwards. Everyone's advancing and we are moving backwards. Sword is there on our path to the past. It's lack of tolerance, lack of autonomy of personality. Overstyles to trust to different kinds of authority and different institutions that dictate what people have to do, that suppress the will of the people. So that's what's in place. That's what's in play. And the parasites that are part of the Russian elite try to preserve their status in as part of this conservative trend. And as a result, our society is degrading in terms of values. And in intolerance is on the rise. Xenophobia is on the rise. It's being blown out of proportion by the mass media, state-run mass media. Uh, just yesterday, I was at the Russia TV channel, one of the major two channels. And they almost have uh, this xenophobia and anti-American sentiment industry. And usually it's an indicator of how mature society is. The less mature the society is, the more it has, you know, teenage crisis symptoms and complexes. The strong anti-Americanism is, it's like an acid test. So here's a, it was done in 2007 and that trend was reversed when that started to move backwards. And yesterday I looked up some polls related to anti-American sentiment. In 2007, at that very point when it started to move backwards, a quarter of Russians viewed America as the enemy, and now we have three quarters of Russians, 75% viewing America as their enemy. So this arrow must be somewhere here, really close to the uh, y-axis. And now, as a sum up, uh, I'd like to present my consequence, my vision of the consequences. It could be very deplorable because the power, the government destroys the Russian society. It wants to preserve its power structures. We all understand that the government cannot last forever. This government cannot last forever. And some of them even understand it's their end is imminent, but they need to think how to preserve it. Oh. And if this conservative trend continues to abuse our society, to misuse it, then the outcome could be very negative. So it could be, might be something that we saw at the, 19, at the beginning of the 1990s. We could have a massive con conservative reactionary attitude in contrast to what we had in uh, liberalism. It could be a rise of fascism. We could have more radical nationalist parties claiming power. So now that we have in complete intolerance, we see the rise of non-liberal values far from liberalism. So, what well, we have aggressive nationalism and fascism resurgent in Russia. 
So that's what we need to talk openly, to be straightforward about. We need to warn about that. We need to get ready for the possible outcome. The biggest crime against Russia, against the Russian people, is a different one. Maybe we won't have fascists, maybe we can survive, but what's imminent is the long-term delay in the development of the country. And here's one important point. As I said, liberalism needs to break away from a lot of traditions, but it doesn't mean that liberalism should break away from the basic culture, from the identity, from the nature of the Russian people. But what's its identity is all about? How could it play out? How could it play a very different role? It's hackneyed truth, of course, but the Russians are very talented. They've it produces a lot of talents, and Russian authors have often observed that we have an author like Leskov, and he's had a wonderful um, t story like a Left Hand Man, and now Lauren Graham published a book, Can Russia Compete? And he remarked that there's one interesting paradox in the Russian culture. On the one hand, you have so many talented people, inventors, scientists, and so on. But on the other hand, you have a huge backward backwardation in terms of the industrial development. Yes, we do have this dichotomy in Russia and there are some barriers to the development of the Russian um, of Russian talent. We do have the potential to go to that knowledge-based economy, we, but we need to remove the barriers. And the conservative trend kills the potential, and that's why. This is the reason for the brain drain. We sh share our grey matter with other countries, but we desperately need that grey matter to become a developed country. So that's the main crime. So the government appeals that patriotism, but it kills the potential that could help us become a developed nation and compete with other countries of the world. So we believe that we will prevail and Russian liberals will prevail. We are the force that can unblock, that can unleash the potential of the Russian people to unlock that inner growth that could lead to our competitive advantage. But still, there's a long way outstanding. But we haven't able to get much progress. First of all, we need to make sure that Russian people have a positive attitude towards Russian liberalism. Currently, most of the people believe have a negative attitude. We need to work with the creative class of the Russian people. It now is infected with xenophobia, with uh, negative and conservative trends. So the most important thing is the rehabilitation of the liberals. In the 1990s, most of the scoundrels and villains worked under the banner of liberalism. So they did what they did, and Mr. Gr Gr Mr. Grigory Vlinsky referred to that. So sometimes they say, you're a minority. Why are you in politics? And Mikhail Sokolov is here from Radio Freedom. He asked me that. What's the point of all of that? So here's an analogy. So do you remember uh, the Ariadna's uh, rope, a thread? A thread is something almost intangible, and it can break at any moment. But if you don't have that thread, if you don't have that Ariadna's thread, like in Greek legend, you won't be able to get out of this labyrinth. So we, our mission is to keep this thread, 
As long as we have it, we'll have hope for a development, for the preservation of Russia in the 21st century. Thank you very much.